Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. So we're continuing our review for this year's IMO, IMO 2022, which was held in Norway. And in the previous two videos, we discussed problem one and problem two. So if you remember, problem one was a combinatoric, a combinatorics like problem. Problem two was an algebraic problem because it was a functional inequality. And now we'll be discussing problem three, which is a number theory problem. So we have seen that problem one was a bit easy. Problem two was not that like uh, difficult. It was basically medium or between like medium and easy. In fact, like it tends to be easy a bit. And now we'll be discussing problem three, which is supposed to be really hard. So in fact, as you know, like in the IMO, we have two papers, paper one, paper two, like day one and day two. We have the first day, three problems, the second day, three problems as well. So problem one and four are supposed to be easy. Two and five are medium and three are, and six are really hard. So like today we'll be discussing problem three. So let's take a look. What are we waiting for? Let's get started. So the problem statement goes as the following. So let k be a positive integer and let S be a finite set of odd prime numbers. So basically, we have a set S with odd primes, like any prime that's not two. We need to prove that there is at most one way up to rotation and reflection to place the elements of S around the circle. So what does that mean, like up to rotation and reflection? That means basically like if you have elements on a circle and like, like this is one, for example, uh, one way, like if you rotate them, like that does not count like different from the first thing because you're just rotating them. And or like if you reflect them as well, like it will count the same. So that means like it's still one way. All right, so we need to show that there is at most one way to place the elements of S on a, on a circle such that the product of any two neighbors on this circle is of the form x squared plus x plus k for some positive integer x. So basically like k is fixed here like it's one not fixed number. However, like x can change here. All right, so let's actually break down like what is the statement about. All right, so first of all, like uh, basically here what they are telling us is that we have a set S, like it has uh, odd primes, let's say P1, P2, P3, up to Pn. Like we have N, uh, like the size of S is N, for example, and we have basically like odd primes P1, P2, up to Pn. So we need to show that there is at most one way, like that means there is like either there is no way at all or there is only one way, like uh, not two, not three. So basically we like uh, we need to show that there, can, there can't be like more than uh, one way, like two ways or more to place the elements of S like P1, P2 up to Pn on a circle in some way, in some order, such that the two neighbors like a, e, any two neighbors. So let's say for example, P1, we have like P1, P3, P5, and so on, for example. That means like P1 times P3, the, these are two neighbors here, like uh, is, is of the form x squared plus x plus k. Like it, it has the following, it can be written in the following form. For example, maybe like P1 times P3 is something like four squared plus four plus k. Like it is on, like uh, can be written on this form for some positive integer x. All right. And basically, like we, uh, as we mentioned, that we need to show that, that we cannot have two different uh, configurations, like basically two different circles, circular permutation in this way. All right, so in fact, like it is clear that our proof will be using like the contradiction principle. So we'll assume that there is indeed like more than one way. So basically two ways or more, at least two ways. Like we will consider both of them, like we'll put them, for example, here on a circular permutation another circular permutation and try to reach a contradiction some, somehow. All right, so like the easiest way to start, for example, of course, like here is to start uh, with simple cases when the set S like has small size. So basically if we have just one number, one odd prime P1, well clearly like it is already proven because in this case, like it can, we have only one way to place one number on a circle, right? All right. What about like uh, size of S is two? Well, the same actually, P1, P2 can only place it like placed on a circle in one way. P1, P2, P2, P1, these are the same because as we mentioned, like rotation doesn't count. The same actually for three, 
like when set, uh, S has three numbers, P1, P2, P3, because actually, let's take a look. If you have three numbers here, P1, P2, P3, well, actually, this is not different from P1, P3, P2, because take a look here. This is the same as this. This is just a rotation or a reflection like. So basically, these count the same. So in fact, like when the set of S has size 1, 2, and 3, like all of them, we have shown that indeed, like this thing holds. There's at most one way to place them. Uh, however, like clearly, these are simple examples because we, we, we did not even finish the problem. Like we just like stopped here, like on a circle. So now let's consider what about the size of S is 4. All right. So now let's say like set S has four prime, like odd primes, P1, P2, P3, P4. P1, P2, P3, P4. Like now clearly this is different from this one. P1, P3, P2, P4. This one is different from this, clearly. Like now, let's assume, like for example, to the contrary, that this is a valid, like, like, uh, like the, like I, I, the product, the product of any two neighbors here, is of this form x squared plus x plus k for some positive number x, positive uh, integer x. That means that p1 times p2, uh, like is following form p2 p3, the same p3 times p4, p4 times p1. All of them are like the same way. In fact, like. Like the easiest, actually, I believe the easiest way to think about this kind of problem is basically like for any two numbers that have the pro like their product is of this form, like this, for example, connect them by an edge. So something like this, P1 and P2, their, their multiplication, their product is of this form. So let's connect them by an edge. Let's actually change the color here. Something like this. These two as well, these two as well, these two as well. So any two neighbors are simply connected by edge because their multiplication is of this form. Now, if we assume that this one, like to the contrary, we assume that this one also is valid, that means that P1 is complete to P3, P3 to P2, P2 to P4, and P1 to P4. So in fact, now if we combine the two, figure, like the, the two graphs basically together, we will take a look here, like P1 is connected to P3, that means that P1 and P3 are, are joined by an edge. P2 and P4, that means the diagonals are connected here. So what we want to show basically to aim for like that we don't have such like a complicated graph basically like where we have lots of connections. That's actually what we want to prove. We want ideally to show like uh, basically for any uh, set S with odd primes P like there's at most one way like just to show that uh, like we can we can place them on a circle such that each uh, number is connected by two edges, but not, not necessarily that, but something like this, similar. So we, we don't uh, want, uh, for example, one number to, to, has lo to have lots of connections, like lots of edges, because we'll, we'll have something terrible like this, this case. So basically like this will be our intuition and how we will think about the problem. So basically, we will take one number, P for example, and focus on it. Ideally, we want it to have to have basically two edges. We will assume that in fact it has three edges because like if we have really like two, uh, two, uh, like two circular permutations, then clearly some numbers are like uh, have more than one, two edges, like three edges, for example here P1, actually here all the numbers have. So we'll basically take a number and assume that it has three edges and try to analyze and find like something uh, like useful from, from this basically uh, from configuration or this case. All right, so let's erase now this case here and consider a number with three edges. All right, so basically how we would think about the problem is like using the following way. So let's assume that we have one, uh, like as we mentioned, bad case, like we have one number P that has three edges. So let's say here we have Q, R, S, three numbers, three edges. 
All right, what does that mean? So basically, we know that if an edge is connecting two numbers, and that means that uh, their multiplication is of the following form, x squared plus x plus k, or some positive integer k, uh, x, for, sorry. All right, so what does basically like this uh, basically thing mean, like p is connected to q, to r, and s? Basically, that means that pq is of the, the following form, can be written in the following form. p r the same. and P is the same. Of course, like here, P is fixed, K is fixed, however, X is not. Because like X here is not the same as this X, not the same like uh, as this X. All right, so like what, like really, like, uh, so like we have actually something like special here. So basically, what is this, like something uh, really special about this? Well, x squared plus x plus k. Well, clearly this is quadratic, right? Like because it has degree two. And we usually know that quadratic equations like have only two solutions, right? Two, uh, like either, for example, we have three cases, either two distinct solutions, one solution or no solution. But here we tend to have like three solutions. Like in the ideal case, when we have just two edges, two solutions, here we have three. So can we like perhaps try to, to like uh, use that to our advantage. Well, clearly here like the, the, the situation is not co like perfect because actually these three uh, equations are different. Like this equation here we have Q, this equation here we have R, this equation here we have X. So like these are changing. So actually we don't have the same equation. However, can we somehow, because we're dealing with number theory, we're, we're dealing with integers, like try to make them one equation actually like if we have these three, uh, like three equations are the same basically, then like at least two equations will have to share the same x, the same solution x. So can we actually do something like that? Well, actually, yes. Take a look here. Well, you see that this is number is changing. So basically all of our equations of the following, like p times something equals x squared plus x plus k. k is fixed, though, of course. How can we like turn this into equation? Not depending on the value of this thing. Well, actually, try to guess it. We're dealing with number theory, so basically we can take mod p. So in fact, if we take mod p, then no matter what this thing is, this is zero. Basically, we have our equation x squared plus x plus k equals zero. Mod p, of course, uh, like it's congruent to, p, uh, to zero mod p. And now we have one equation. Like all of these three are basically one equation but of course modulo p. So actually let's consider that, this is really nice. All right, so like let's consider this equation, x squared plus x plus k congruent to zero mod modulo p. Like actually, this is a quadratic equation, of course, modulo p. In fact, it has only two solutions, like at most two solutions. It cannot have more than that. And like actually the proof is like really simple, not that complicated. Like if you want to prove it, then just like take uh, like two solutions, x1 and x2. Assume that x1 squared plus x1 plus k is congruent to zero x2 the same, x2 squared plus x2 plus k is going to zero. Subtract the two equations, k cancels. We, ha we can factorize x1 minus x2 out to get something like this. And actually we'll have something like this, I believe. x1 plus x2 uh, plus one is congruent to zero. Well, if these two are different, like for here we're dealing with mod modulo p, so like, uh, we are just dealing with numbers like less than p or something like that, like not really less than p, but we're just dealing with modulo p here. So if x1 is uh, different uh, from x2, then this, is, this cannot be zero since p is a prime. That means that x1 plus x2 uh, plus one is congruent to zero. And simply that means that actually we have x1 plus x2 is congruent to negative one. Modulo p. So actually, if we have three solutions, x1, x2, and x3, that will mean x1 plus x2 is 
uh, congruent to negative one, x1 plus x3 is congruent to negative one modulo p. That means that basically x2 and x3 are the same modulo p. So that means indeed we just have two solutions, no more than two solutions. All right, perfect. So now actually, because we have three edges, that means x here, x here, and x here, two of them are the same modulo p, of course. All right, perfect. So now using a modulo p, let's assume that this is x1, this is x2, this is x1, for example. Because as we mentioned, like of course here we're dealing with modulo p. Like the problem is that we're dealing with modulo p, not with like really integers now, like the, the whole uh, natural numbers, for example, because they can be the same modulo p, but they can be different. So here is actually our, our problem because we want them like, uh, uh, like to get a contradiction some, somehow, you want them like to be the same, for example, uh, using uh, not modulo, like uh, in, in, the, in basically like natural numbers, we want them to be equal. However, they're just equal, congruent to each other, uh, modulo p. So how can we do that? Like, is there a way? Like usually we know that if two numbers are equal, then they are equal, like modulo any two numbers, they're congruent to each other. So if x1 is the same as x, like x1 here, is x3 uh, the same as x3, then that means x1 is congruent to x3 modulo p. However, can we do it the opposite? Like if x1 is congruent to x3 modulo p, then x1 equals x3. Well, not always, but somehow we can do that actually, like sometimes. Where, when exactly? Well, try to think of it. Like let's write it actually down. x1 is congruent to x3 modulo p. When can we write this? Well, actually we can if p was greater than x1 and x3. Because like here we're dealing with modulo p. So that means like they have the same remainder modulo p. So what if they were both less than p? That like uh, they are like of course between zero and p. That means that they are the same, like they are like, uh, basically they have the same remainder. However, they, they both uh, like less than P, that means that they are the same. They are equal to this remainder. So if we can somehow pick a large P, a P like a, a large P here, then we will uh, just get that they are equally uh, the, the same. So what exactly, like we want to have a P that is greater than X1, X2, then that simply means that uh, uh, basically we, we have like this thing, this, this thing is valid. Like these two are equal, congruent to each other modulo p, then they are the same. So we just like need to find ha like some uh, how a big, a large uh, prime number p to satisfy this thing. So how can we take like this large number p? All right, so let's think about that. How can we make sure that p is greater than the solution x itself? Well, actually, this is simple. <laughs> you want a large p, why not picking the largest prime p on the whole set? Well, clearly, like, like if this like does not hold, then like if this one it doesn't hold, then you cannot pick it at all. So let's actually like choose p to be the largest prime in the set. Clearly, it's not necessarily for the largest prime to have three edges. But let's consider this case. Like we either have the largest prime in, the, in this set has two edges, which is fine, or it has three edges or more. Let's consider the case when it has three edges or more. Like we want to basically disprove that. So let's assume that this is the largest prime in the set, S, P, and it, it is uh, like connected to three uh, like random primes, uh, like other elements of S. Then, because P is the largest thing, of course, it's larger than S, larger than R, and larger than Q. And remember, we know that PQ is equal to X squared plus X plus K. Well, we need to show that P is greater than X. Actually, this is not difficult at all, because take a look here. Here we have X squared. That simply means that PQ is greater than X squared, right? And we know that P is greater than Q. 
then that means we have something like this. Well, that simply means that p is greater than x, right? And we are done. Yep, because p is greater than x, the same way you can show that p is greater, uh, like, uh, like in this is actually in general, like for pq, pr, and ps. That means that p is indeed greater than the solution x. And that simply means if these two are congruent to each other, modulo p, they're both less than p, meaning that they are indeed the same. Perfect. So what does that mean? That simply means that pq is equal to x, like x1 squared plus x1 plus, x plus k. ps is equal to x1 squared plus x1 plus k. Well, that simply means that s equals q, like s is equal to q. Well, that simply is not valid because uh, like it, this is a set, like it, it does not have uh, like uh, an element repeated more than once. So that means like this case is really wrong. All right, perfect. So that means we just have two edges as just we want it. So let's like do a recap here. Like what we've done here really, well actually what we've done here is that in a set S, pick the largest prime P. This prime has only two edges, exactly two edges. It cannot have more than two edges. So basically let's like assume that this is our configuration like that like the valid thing that satisfy this property. Then that means that the prime P the largest prime p determines its two neighbors. Like you cannot change them at all. Like let's say for example they are uh, q and r. Like and we have like something here, like the, the rest of the circle. Like these are determined actually, they cannot change. There are exactly two of them. So like as we mentioned, we are assuming to the, con to the contrary that we have two valid circular permutation. However, what we know now is that in the two circular permutation, we have P, Q, like Q, P, R, Q, P, R in both of them. Like the rest of the circle, it might like change. However, these two are fixed. P always has Q here and R here. So like it has fixed neighbors. So what does that exactly mean? Like does that finish the problem, for example? Well, not, not, not exactly. But it's really helpful because, take a look here, like we're, the, we, we're fixing like basically uh, one prime here and it's two neighbors. So perhaps like we're decreasing the number of this set, like the, the size of S from N, for example, to N minus one. Maybe you can use induction some, somehow in this problem now. Like for example, assume that uh, we, like the, the, this uh, property is tr valid for set size of S uh, like uh, less than N, like N minus one, N minus two, up to one, and down to one. And we will show it for N. And we'll use the fact that we have already like got rid of uh, one, one, one prime here, because it's already fixed. But like, uh, can we actually do that? Well, actually not yet, because in order for us to apply the induction, we need like to, to in order to get rid of this thing, we need to have here an edge. Like, like if we have an edge here, then that means that this circle is closed. That means we can apply the induction here. There's only one way to, uh, basically like on this n minus one uh, numbers, there is only one way to place them in a circle that satisfy this property. Uh, all right, so if we can prove that, then here like we are done basically because there's only one way to, to, to place these. And here we already have only one way to place these. Then we'll be done. So all what we need to do is like just to show that Q and R are connected. Like the neighbors of the largest prime are connected. If they are connected, then we can apply induction to finish the problem. If they are, if they are not, we cannot apply induction because as we mentioned, we cannot apply induction unless we have a closed circle here. So basically, maybe we can somehow sh manage to show that Q and R are connected by an edge, meaning that Q, R, Q times R can be written of the form X squared plus X plus K. If we can show that, then basically we have crashed the problem. So let's try to show that. All right, so actually what we have, like the information we have is like simple because we just have two equations here. We know that 
p r is equal to, for example, let's say a square plus a plus k and p q is equal to b square plus b plus k. And like we just have these two equations, we need to show that qr can be written in this form to x squared plus x plus k. And we know that p is the largest prime here, like p is greater than r, p is greater than q. And we already know, remember, that p is greater than x, meaning that we already know that p is greater than a and p is greater than b. Well, actually, can we use that here? Like, remember, we used that to show that both of them like, are equal, like we have two solutions, uh, like out of three are equal. However, actually, if you remember, when we subtracted the two equations, when we sh were showing that uh, like the equation modulo p has only two solutions, we like, found something interesting, which was the following. If you remember, uh, like here, if we, if we take it again like modulo p, the two equations, we'll have a squared plus a plus k is congruent to zero modulo p, b squared plus b plus k is congruent to zero modulo p. If we subtract these two, we will get a minus b times a plus b plus 1 is congruent to 0 modulo p. Clearly, a cannot be equal to p. That means that like r equals q. So like we can simply divide by this thing. Like we can get rid of it. That means that a plus b is congruent to negative 1. Or we can write it as p minus 1 modulo p. Now, why is this interesting? Why are we dealing with modulo p from the beginning? Well, we're dealing with modulo p because remember, a and b are both less than p because p, as we mentioned, is greater than x, p is greater than a, p is greater than b. That means when we have an equation modulo p, where, like we have a and b, that means we can turn it into an actual equation. So basically, if we have a plus b is congruent to b minus 1, that means it, it, is like it has the following form, basically, a plus b a plus b like is something like either p minus 1, 2p minus 1, 3p minus 1, and so on. We're just adding p's here. However, because a and b are both less than p, that means that a plus b is like less than 2p, like strictly less than 2p. Uh, in fact, like it's even less than 2p minus 1 because a is less than or equal to p minus 1 b as well, so their sum is less than or equal to 2p minus 2. So in fact, all of these are like refused, like this is the only one that's valid. So in fact, we just not have just two solutions, uh, sorry, two equations, we have three equations actually here. Perfect. Now, now dealing with mod is really awesome, don't you think? So simply now, we have a third equation, which is really cool. It simply states that a plus b is equal to p minus 1. Perfect. So now like we've reduced the number of unknown variables here. All right. Can we use that even more? Well, let's take a look here. Like now we know that their sum is p minus 1. Maybe like perhaps we can subtract the two equations here, get something nice. Let's try. Like if we subtracted both of these equations, we'll get something like this. P times R minus Q is equal to, I'm just like playing with these two equations, A plus P plus 1. All right, but remember A plus P is just P minus 1. P minus 1 plus 1 is P. Well, P cancels P. That simply means we have a third equation. Well, like imagine like from two equations, we're just getting more equations. That simply means that R minus Q is equal to a minus b. Isn't that perfect? Now we have four equations instead of two. It's really awesome. Now I believe that these are enough. Maybe now we can finish the problem somehow. Let's take a look. All right, now we have four equations. PR equals a squared plus a plus k. PQ equals b squared plus b plus k. A plus b is just p minus 1. And R minus q is just a minus b. Perfect, so now we have these four equations and we need to show that QR can be written on this using like this form. Well, take a look here, like this and this equation are cool, like enough. A plus B is P minus one, this is cool as well. 
However, what is this thing exactly? R minus Q equals A minus B. How can we like use this? In fact, there is like a famous way to handle this type of equations. Like uh, it's basically like to, to like force it to be true. How exactly? Well, like if A is R and B is Q, then this is true already. However, like it's not just like that. What if A is R plus any number, any fixed number, let's say C, and B is just Q plus C? Like then, this will be true always. And in fact, like this is basically the solution itself. So in fact, now we can erase this equation and instead of it write like two equations, A equals R plus C and B equals Q plus C. This will be valid, true. And in fact, this will be the solution for it. So let's just do that here. So basically, we're trying to solve now these four equations somehow. Like we don't want to solve them. We just need to show that QR can be written in that form, x squared plus x plus k. So now we know that A can be written of like using this R, R plus C and B is just Q plus C. All right. So now we know like we have these two equations. Uh, all right, so what next? Of course, like now we, we can represent uh, P as well. Like take a look here. What is A plus B? It is R plus Q plus 2C. So let's just like substitute that here. We'll get that P is just R plus Q plus 2C plus one. So we can also erase this one and express it using R and Q. Of course, like we're trying to increase the frequency of getting R and Q in order to get RQ somehow in our two equations here. So basically, we now we know that P is R plus Q plus 2C plus 1. Perfect. Now simply, we have these two equations. Like actually, you can pick any of them and like replace P with this thing and you will get RQ. Like for example, here, let's take for example, the first equation, for example, R. Like here, if we replace P using this expression, like you will get r times q, right? And maybe somehow we can show that this is x squared plus x plus k. So let's take our first equation and write everything like p using this and a using this. And let's like take a look what will happen. So basically now we have p, which is r plus q plus 2c plus 1 times uh, r. This is equal to, which what is a? Basically r plus c squared plus r plus c plus k. Let's try to cancel the common stuff here. So here we have r squared, here we have r squared. Uh, what else? Here we have 2rc, here we have 2cr, so they get cancelled as well. So basically, this get cancelled, this get cancelled. What else? Let's see. Uh, r get cancelled actually here, so r and r. So this one gets cancelled. So in fact, we just have now RQ, which is perfect. Take a look now. QR is equal to, all right, so what did not get cancelled? C squared plus C plus K. Well, ladies and gentlemen, QR is C squared plus C plus K. X squared plus X plus K. We are basically done. We already shown that. QR can be written of the form x squared plus x plus k. In fact, this exact like x is just like the difference between a minus b or r minus q. Because remember, like uh, a minus b is just c, right? Like here, like, sorry, it's uh, the difference between a and a minus b, not q minus r. So basically now we've shown that q, r, like they are connected by an edge. So now if we got again to our original diagram there, graph basically now we know that the largest prime p if both neighbors q and r we have triangle here these are always fixed like the rest of the circle it can do whatever it wants however this is fixed always that means now we can just apply induction on this circle we know that it has only one way Basically, if this has only one way, then this as well has only one way. And basically, we're done. IMO 2022, problem three is done. So as a summary, let's take a look at the steps like in solving this 
problem, which is really like hard problem. It's problem three after all. Let, like, let's discuss what we've done basically here. So first of all, we took a look at the statements. We basically, like we knew how to prove this thing. Like we want to assume to the contrary that we have two, like a bad case, which is having at least two uh, like v v valid uh, circular permutations that satisfy this thing. First of all, we took a look when the size of S is one, two, three. Basically, this is like uh, the base case in our induction step, one, two, and three. It works. We, like when we discussed the, like, uh, the size of S is four, we understood about like the idea of edges. We, we want like basically to take one number and show that it has like basically two edges somehow, which uh, like in this case was our largest prime in fact. So like two edges. Like of course, like not all of them has just two edges. For example, here R clearly has one edge, two edge, and another edge here. However, like we were just analyzing this uh, like uh, case basically, if one number has three edges, and we uh, like took a, mo a mod modulo p, which was really helpful in this problem. So basically, the whole idea is just to take modulo p there, and when you take modulo p, you have three equations with a quadratic like uh, three equation three quadratic equations, like uh, they are basically the same equation. So that means two are the same, right? Like if you remember Q, R, and S, Q was the same as S, right? Like the, like the, respect, the respective X there, it was the same modulo P. However, there was a really, we used a really nice way, like in order to go from, uh, from modulo to real like equality, not from just equality modulo some number, using the idea of taking the largest prime P and showing that P is greater than X. That immediately got us to like know that the largest prime number it has two fixed neighbors, like Q and R. You cannot have anything else. That means that P exactly has two edges. Now we were thinking, like, can we apply induction somewhere somehow? The only way to show it, like, to use induction, if is like to show that R and Q are connected. If they are connected by an edge, we can use induction here. So we just need to show that Q R is indeed like uh, can be written in this form. We use the two equations. We got the third, a third one, and the fourth one. Then we just like in order to use the fourth one, we presented like this, this really uh, simple but really handsome uh, way here. A equals R plus C, B equals Q plus C. Like A plus B was B minus one, so we represented B using R, C, and Q. And simply we just took we like one random of these, like any any of them will work, and represented it. On, and basically we got that Q R is just C squared plus C plus K, and basically we were done. That means that these two are connected, and simply we are done. Because you can apply it by induction here, like on N minus one here, then we, we know that for sure, uh, like this is fixed, like only one way here. That means the whole thing has only one way. And basically we are done. That was problem three. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this problem. If you do, uh, if you did like, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and see you guys in the next video.